Hi, I'm John, the Community Currency Engineer Termel, and today we have someone talking about lets and bartering and setting up your own private currency lifeboat. So, Xavier Hermes, a good article. Let's Barter by Xavier Hermes. And I got this at sunraw.metaentrance.com slash 2009 slash 06 slash let's hyphen barter. So, June the 5th. This came from an email post by the Rumor Mill News Reading Room. While the powers that be intentionally crash the money system, we can live without it. Here is how. So, posted by Xavier Hermes on the 23rd of October, 2008, last year. The fact that our highly manipulative system of money equals control is breaking down, and that this breakdown is global in its effect. Many of us believe that this is being done intentionally, as yet another transfer of wealth scam on a mega scale, and one that we can easily feel quite powerless to resist. Meanwhile, the money system has long since failed to properly deliver the classic definition we were taught in school, that it should be A, a unit of account, B, a store of value, C, a medium of exchange. Well, it's a long time back, but I think those were the three defining characteristics as I remember them. Under A above, money is only a viable unit of account if it is stable, long term. Otherwise, the values being accounted for are easily distorted. Under B, the store of value has been constantly diminished by that form of governmental theft, one of several, called inflation, and therefore ceases to function properly in this role. And of course, he must be thinking inflation shift A, because it's not the government that causes shift B, it's the banks. Usury. We are about to see very much more of this, quite probably a complete loss of monetary value, like the Weimar Republic in Germany between the wars. Shift A, too much money, wheelbarrows full. As governments around the world magic up money to bail out or nationalize banks and other failing institutions, money they don't have, and which is not justified by the size of their economies. This will bring hyperinflation, wheelbarrows full of money just as it has when this situation has arisen in previous times and places. Then under C, the medium of exchange, too, ceases to be effective when monetary val unit value is being ro lost rapidly. I guess we all know most of the above. <clears throat> I've restated it because it's necessary to see that, one, our medium of exchange is in the process of fundamental breakdown. Two, this does not affect the value of most of the core goods and services that we used to ensure our basic requirements for living, though it is probably a different matter for many luxuries. <clears throat> it only affects the way a failing money system relates to those goods and services. Therefore, three, we are in a time where money can no longer do its primary job efficiently or perhaps at all. There is another way that allows us to buy and sell without being trapped by the money crisis, governmental greed, or the banker's manipulation. I assure you, we can really work without it. Think first about barter. Barter is as old as the hills and was carried out long before money was commonplace. Its main disadvantage is that it is mostly one-on-one -on -one transactions and therefore lacks flexibility, as you need a perfect match between buyer, the barter party's to complete the deal. It is really efficient if you have that match. However, modern technology in the form of a PC comes to the rescue. If a group of families come together to create a barter environment, a computer can keep the score so that transactions become several on several. To illustrate, I can buy timber from Fred, he can get his ironing done by Sue, she can get Pete to fix her broken window, and Fred can hire Pete to lay some brickwork, and so on. The computer can keep account of the transactions between a large number of people and ensure that each account remains within allowable limits so that no participant simply milks the system. You can have your own units of virtual currency. Each member has a checkbook and there needs to be someone who's willing for a small percentage credit per transaction to run the central system. Essentially, that is it. This is known as local exchange trading or LETS. A definition is as follows. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's local exchange trading system or schemes. I like local employment trading system because a system for trading exchange locally doesn't make sense like a system for trading employment locally makes sense. Our community based mutual aid networks in which people exchange all kinds of goods and services with one another without the need for money. Well, their money. You have your own money. 
definition taken from the website of Let's Link UK, which has a lot of good information. I would add another thought to this, particularly valid at this time. A local system cannot be easily manipulated by greedy governments, banks, Illuminati cabals, etc. It is sovereign to the local people who operate it as a mutual trading system. Yes. There are many thousands of such systems around the world, yet the vast majority of us have either ignored them or simply don't know about them. Well, in the face of the collapsing money system, now is the time to find out. Experienced Let's Group say that over 60% of your regular living needs can be met within such a system, and with some innovation, members can achieve even more. A key to success of these systems is to keep things local. Not necessarily. It's always going to run well local, and there's no reason your IOUs can't be spent overseas like I did. Local produce, local services, local projects, and overseas accommodations. And make sure that the central administrator benefits. My impression is that systems that rely on volunteers to do this usually get into organizational trouble sooner or later and are prone to collapse for the wrong reasons. Nobody willing to run it for no reward after the initial enthusiasm has died away. Now a little story, true but taken from memory, about LET systems in Germany. The Germans had been one of the most avid users of LET systems. They're called Tausch rings, work rings. So much so that at least 10 years back, some of the systems with bigger memberships into the thousands started approaching farmers to barter for their entire crop and then went on to ask for crops to be grown for the specific needs of LET's members. Supermarket groups became highly concerned and banded together in court action to stop the commercial threat of large groups of people buying direct. And as far as I can remember, they were overruled. And in France, too, they tried to attack people who were working for LET's. They were overruled, too. Result, middleman cut out, while both farmer and consumer did much better. The same can be done with manufacturers or distributors creating your own bulk buying power. A number of initiatives in partnership with local authorities have created services partnerships using LET's currency. There are many other innovations including bringing multiple LET systems together for even greater bartering power. These are all additions to the local goods and services that are at the core of the system. Managed with enthusiasm and a modicum of skill, a good LET system can bring much additional life to the local economy. No money changes hand in the process, unless they print their own paper money and change it in hands in the process. It can work well for people with no money whatsoever, because they can borrow and use some, assuming that they are willing to just join in and can invent something to barter that others want for babysitting, painting, mowing of lawns, to highly technical and professional skills, all have a place. You can do social things like giving some credit within the system to retirees that's sick, etc. Why? They got their own credit accounts. Let them borrow it. As long as it's kept in balance with the scale of trading. Nobody cares about balance. The oldsters already put in a lifetime of work. Charity events can be used to generate credits for this purpose. So, here's something practical you can do to act as a defense against the coming financial collapse. Yeah, set, your, set up your own lifeboat. Seek out your local LET system systems and start utilizing them. If there really isn't one, download one of the several free LET software systems, invite some friends in and get started. If you can find someone locally with existing experience in LETs, so much the better. So. We really don't need the broken down and manipulative systems of the powers that were. In any event, it is increasingly used for all sorts of theft, sometimes on a huge scale, with the victims inevitably being us. You can be heartened that widespread use of lets will also move the powers that were even more quickly towards their demise. Oh, by the way, lets can also be fun to do. Time to just walk away, folks. Anytime you can devise, let's is on good is a good way to start. Go for it. Don't you agree that the powers that were have been taking the whatever out of the entire population for long enough with their fake money system and all that goes with it? Certainly that's my take. Xavier Hermes. P.S. I came across a great enrollment game for Let's called Let's Trade some years ago. You get a big group of people together in a local village hall or equivalent and spend the evening setting out what you want, what you can do, then playing a simulated Let's system for the evening to learn the trading technique. Yeah, how do you use money?
It's a real eye-opener as to how local cooperation can provide a large proportion of those goods and services you need to live comfortably. PPS, you can find a great deal of information about Let's on the Internet. So, Xavier Hermes, go, go, go! <laughs>